Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Begin Your Journey by Money Machine. And today we are going to be looking on how to make money online through websites and also through high skill, high paying skilled job. All right. So here with me is Mr. Abraham. He's the senior project manager of Opus, also the social media manager of Gemstroid and the web designer of Dove Tech Company. All right, Mr. Paul, you are welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Thank All you. right. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It's a pleasure having you around. Yeah. Over the years, I've worked with remote tax, I've worked with Airtime, and I've worked with various websites that pay freelancers to work. And I've discovered that we have two types of freelancer, unskilled freelancers and well-skilled freelancers, people who work online that are skilled but one of the problems i have recently is the fact that when a website shuts down for an unskilled freelancer he doesn't have any other job to do and today we are going to be examining how to make money how to get better while working as a freelancer online i want to say mr paul has it been has your journey been with working online um i think firstly it started um 2018 when I started doing some unskilled freelancing job. Um, I won't really say job per se, but it's also um, an online way of you know, getting income. I started with Forex, then I went into crypto, but I wasn't really deep into it. But you know, it's, these are also online platforms where you get incomes from. So, but at some point, I wanted to, I wanted to venture into real tech. I wanted to go into the real tech world. So I 2020, I, I met a friend mm -hmm. and from there um, he exposed me to the tech world itself that's um, um web design. So I actually did venture into it for like a year. So but you know one thing about me is that I have no uh, as much as I really want to learn the skill, I also want to earn money. True. Because one major thing is I you see so many skillful guys, so many skillful freelancers and they they really don't have enough base to actually make enough income. Yeah. All right. So so I think one one major thing I I know I I, I also try venture into is learning uh, marketing skills. Wow. Yes, because no matter what no matter how skillful you are, you must also know how to market. Yeah. All right. So it is one thing learning the skill, and it's another thing learning how to market the skill. Okay. Yes. So I ventured into um, the marketing, uh, sorry, uh, marketing online also, so I can market my skills. So and I I went further into um, project management. Yes. I got. Um, a project management certification that could make me a project manager so i'm not just um a web designer i'm also i can also stand as a tech project manager and i can manage projects not just i can manage a whole project wow that that's beautiful it yeah. looks more like my own story because i started also as an skilled freelancer but not yet a skilled freelancer because yeah. I'm hoping to become a free, a skilled freelancer soon. And see, one thing is, for some of us, it's not just passion; it is money. We have, we have, we have passion for skill. We also yeah. have higher passion for money. Yeah, yeah. You see, and how do we? The the question is now: How do we move from being on skilled freelancer to become skilled freelancer and yet be on a stable economy? Um, okay, now this is it. Um, I think for every unskilled freelancer, what the difference between someone who is unskilled and someone who is skillful is not really much. Mm. It's just a step, right? But the thing is, what 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 really keeps an unskilled freelancer is just um, you know making money, just like remote acts, you know, those are kind of an uh, unskilled freelancer and. You know, just usually trying to make money and the likes. But for someone to be to be 
a skill freelancer, you must have passion. All right, you must. Okay, fine. Okay, I need to get something doing because now a, a, a skillful freelancer can actually stand on its own, but an unskilled freelancer is very dependent. Hmm, true. Yeah, all right. An unskilled freelancer is very dependent because, for instance, if you are into remote arts, because I, I, I remembered when we were also doing um, arbitrage, all right, it is all right. But this is also an unskilled kind of freelancing, which I will also call an unskilled freelancing. All right. When CAD got shut down by CBN, everybody went shut down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So an unskilled freelancer, a freelancer is very, very dependent. You know, it depends a lot on a specific platform. Why someone who is skilled is not dependent. All right. Is independent. So even if he got shut down, he can actually. It's very easy for him to move from this space to this space, provided he has what to offer, right? Because you can offer something. There's even between you offering something and something offering you, mm. all right? So yeah. more of um, on skill freelancing, you want you are getting something from some. You are like you are you are getting what something can offer you, all right? This is what remote tasks can actually offer me, or this is what I can get from um, arbitrage, but when it comes to being skillful, all right, it is a kind of a trick by bad. So it is very easy for you to see something to sell. You are selling something. You are selling a skill. So provided you are selling, I feel, you know, you you are always you can't really run down if you if you have a product to sell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant because that is the the dependency is the very key word to notice because. When I was working with remote Arts, I was earning about ninety dollars, fifty dollars a week, yeah. and suddenly they they started paying us less and less and less until now you hardly make ten dollars a week wow. if you are working from Nigeria. Wow. But now, if you're working from the U.S., you make over six hundred to two thousand dollars a week. Wow! So wow. this website has shut us down, and people literally, if you depended, if you are depending on remote Arts, mm -hmm. there's no more money. No income. Then I said, okay, I'm going to go into Atem. I was in Atem as a cashier for a while. I was making probably $500 a month. And then it shut down. And then I'm back again to point zero. Wow. So I now, as I was working with Atem, I knew that there was going to be a day that there's going to be a shutdown. Yeah. But I was not thinking it was going to be so, too sudden. Like it came the way it came. Not because Atem shut me down. But because the platform I was using to do the arbitrage I was using shut me out. Wow. And that time says, okay, now we are no longer accepting cashiers like we used to, using the same measure. We are going to be using another measure to accept cashiers, meaning that I cannot bring my friend in as so that I, as a cashier, yeah. my friend cannot co no longer come in as a cashier. Yeah. The door was just closed. And this like this happened to, you know, several of us online, and then we are stopped. But I noticed that there are several other persons, you know, they just know about project management and they just get a job, $2,000 a month, $1,000 a month, and it's a steady income, yeah. no need to bother about any other thing. If this door closes, we got another door to work with. Yeah, sure. So, now, one other thing I feel we, we would really like to know is, how did you move from being on skill to skill? Because um, it seems difficult. Some person says, say this that um it is easy to apply online you know to to start a, a program online but it is hard to finish yeah exactly that's true so what is this learning process that we can you know practice to get to become skilled all right so i think you have to come to a stage of um you making a decision all right because now this is it when you're learning a skill you have a lot to lose Mm. at that period because you have to dedicate so much of the time into something you are just learning that is not any money all right so it's really hard if, if you're an unskilled that somehow it is really hard for an unskilled freelancer to um you know to just um swipe swipe into being a skillful freelancer because you know you are earning money all right this is you are, you are on skill but you're earning money 
you have to take that decision that okay fine i want to learn a skill and probably it's going to take me like nine hours per day you know for me to meet up in three months hmm. if i can now start applying for jobs so which means you are going to sacrifice all those times you use in making money as hmm. an skilled freelancer you understand so yes. you're going to sacrifice all those times you use in making money to um Focus on you know having a skill. Skill and yes. job. So you have to come to a point where you need to make a decision. All right, you need to um you need to come to a, a stand that okay, fine. You know, I'm gonna take the sacrifice of not um, making money this time around because I want to learn the skill. I need, mm. I need to learn the skill. So I I actually took that decision. All right, I was as I said, I was into I was into I was. Not really forex. Into forex, but I was into forex, but you know, somehow I was just into buying of crypto and you understand. So, but I, I needed to come to um, extend. I was also doing arbitrage, right? But I, I needed to come to a conclusion that hey, come on, let me focus on a skill that I really, really sell. Let me, I, I need to get something to sell, all right? I need to have something I can sell at any time, all right? I can sell at any time. That I know when I'm selling it, I, I I don't need to be scared of losing money, All right? Because of course, when you go to forex, you know, most times you actually have this subconsciousness of you, know, you losing money. You get, but in the real world of skill, all right, you are actually selling something. You are not losing it. True. All right. So you are getting the value of what you are giving out. So I need to come here. Come on, let me let me. I just have to deal with this. Let me focus three months or four months on this. I know for this four good months I'm not going to earn. Alright, I'm not going to get as much of as much as, as many income as I used to get before. So I had to come to that determination. And one thing that helped me was I actually get in touch with people who could help who have the same vision with um what I could what what I, I want to do and what I envisage, what I want to become. Right, because for every skill you want to learn, you must have um, what you really want to become. You must actually have it at the back of your mind. All right, this is a level I want to get to in this um, in this world. All right, so I I I had some mingle people who have who have same who had same um, um, understanding of what I really want to be. So I had to mingle with them, and that really helped me go very very fast. Wow. Yes because we um we worked together so and it helped my learning easy all right it helped make my learning easy and you know i think that's just one of the best way you making decision all right that okay i'm going to take the sacrifice for the meantime then also trying to make yourself with people who who have the understanding of what you really want to get from this skill, who also have understanding about this skill, because it's really going to help, it will give you more drive. Okay. That is one, it will give you more drive, it will make your learning easy, right? You won't have to struggle much, because when you begin to struggle, you might also start feeling discouraged, right? But once you begin to find something very easy, you, uh, you tend to, you know, put more effort, and it gives you the ability that you can actually do more. So that's just that's just one way you can. I, I think I, I want to I think I, I want to ask a question. The, the the people you talk about mingling with are they people who are higher than you or people who are who are already skilled? Who knows what they are doing in the in the tech industry, or people also who want, really want to learn? All right. You know? I think I think one 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 thing is this. All right. Try get people who are way ahead of you and people who you are almost in the same line because. Now, for instance, people who are almost um, on the same level with you gives you the challenge. All right, mm -hmm. gives you the challenge. You know, when you see, wow, this person is doing something better than what you can do, it gives you this challenge to want to do more. All right, and it is very easy when you have someone ahead of you. It is very easy for you to ask questions. All right, if you are having an issue, you are encountering a problem, you can easily go to them and okay, hey, please help me out. What is this and what is this? Okay. And when you have people you are almost in, on the same level, all right, it gives you the challenge to want to run. All right. Wow. It gives you the challenge to want to run. And I think that was one of the things that really, really did help me. Um this this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Uh I think I've learned I've learned so much. 
Yeah. I've one, one thing I've learned, and I'm going to put it into practice. And those of us watching us, please, if you want to move from being an unskilled freelancer like myself to be a good, skilled freelancer, I think you should take some of this counsel. Take some time off, get on on the job, learn the job, mingle yourself with people who have gained the knowledge and people who want to gain the knowledge with you to get to the very top. And so I still have one more question on um, learning. You know, people want to learn on-site and some people want to learn off-site. Yeah. Um, you know, um, practically I've seen that you, you had people who taught you or who you were around that were on ground, yeah. that were not online, that were, yeah. you know, on-site. So how do you, for those of us who are online now, what would be your counsel if we are going to, step up into the tech industry and probably which um which program or which part of the tech industry do you think we may likely excel okay all right so um i think i'll have to answer the last question first um you mean the parts of tech that you can venture into depends on what you feel you want to do all right what you feel you want to do and what you think your ability can actually give it all right so you know you can decide it's okay i want to go into web design all right okay no hey i want to go into um professional branding you know marketing um uh, digital marketing and the like so I, I feel every every part of tech is um can be well monetized and of course you can excel hmm. yes because you know the, the truth the truthful part of it is that every part of tech is is evolving so what matters is that you evolve with it all right you evolve with it if for instance um you are um let's say maybe probably in the you know when I do this, when you use just HTML and just CSS, all right, this time around we're having different type of um, different. We're having different type of programming languages, all right. We're having different type of we're having different type of frameworks, all right. You have to be consistent, all right. You need to know okay, what is really really useful in today, all right. You get to go along with it. And you need to know what will be useful tomorrow to get prepared for it. Mm. So that's just the thing. The, the, what matters is that you, you know try keep what you need. You can actually keep relevant in, all right. What you need, you can keep updating yourself on, and what you know the, the very part of tech that you know you can um, you can be consistent because that's what really matter. That's what will really make you excel. Yes. And when it comes to the online and the online, well, me personally, I had to move from Abuja down to um, this place because I felt I would understand better on land. All right, you know, when you see it, this, when you see it, um, I'm not too too good learning online. You know, that's where you have to you have to take note of your learning strength. I have seen people who learn very well online, perfectly. All right, so. But you have to know your ability in learning. So I I know, okay, fine. I might not be really able to catch. I might not be able to learn fast online. So I have to come down to see, um, to get close to people I could mingle with and I could learn from. All right. So, but when you don't have an option, then you have to, because learning online, actually, you have to add extra strength because online you can easily get um you can easily get um, um what did i what distracted okay yes it is really easy for you to get distracted except you're very very disciplined yeah and uh, you know, most especially if you are a not skillful freelancer it is really really hard to learn online because you, know, you keep getting a bit of what you were doing before and you always want to know okay okay uh, this, this is a new bit. Let me see what you want. This is how you just get distracted. Mm. This is how you get distracted, all right? Little mm. little things just get, mm. just get you distracted. Mm. So, you know, I think you need to learn, you need, you need to know your um, learning strength first. You need to know your learning strength first. If you can perfectly do it online, why not? You don't need to do it, all right? And 
one thing is this if you are doing it online there's nothing you are looking for that is not on youtube yes there's nothing you really want to know that you if you are learning there's nothing you want to know once you go into youtube you will definitely see you might not really see exactly but you see something that could give you the solution so learning online also is very 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 good it's very very good oh. because the truth is as um so as a guy who is in tech or as a person who is in tech you can't learn without learning online as a matter of fact true you must definitely learn online it's just that fine you might just learn more online but of course you can't go without learning online because you can't be thought of it in online i think i think i grabbed a lot a lot from that you know i i was trying to learn a course project management i i i think i finished um the the third month in my third week yeah um but i had some issues one of the issues is nigeria general issue you know every guys everybody here knows i'm a nigerian so <laughs> so as i struggle along the the um project management course with coursera there came a point that there was no longer electricity so i couldn't power my system so i couldn't learn and that was how i lost interest i was trying to come back but by the way i said i going back to my previous job trying to make sure sm was working and other stuff like that so i think i've i've gotten that and then also you need to know your strengths you need to know your strength you need to know where you are weak where you're not strong in if it's not if you're not strong in a particular field don't go there because it has a lot of money lastly i don't know if there's any website you could ask anyone to go to you know those of we hear about um free code camp now we are hearing about alx africa are there websites people can visit to learn you know the website you can i, I majorly use them with um free code camp and the degree school all right for elena i think those two are very very perfect so why you actually begin to um evolve and go you know you can actually start you know trying youtube youtube videos they also help a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot thank you very much sir abraham sorry uh i want you to give any word of advice any word of encouragement to our viewers all right the thing is there there is actually a lot to harness from the tech world all right the tech world is so so big and can accommodate a lot of persons all you need to do is just get your niche focus on it and evolve with it that's just what matters all right uh, you know sometimes you see a graphic designer saying um he wants to you know most like when you when you talk about tech everybody really wants to do coding when you talk about tech everybody just think it's all about coding i bet you there are so many part of tech that earn more money than even people that code hmm. all right so you just get your niche all right you get what you want to focus and you evolve with it and one major thing is while you do that learn how to market your skills all right know your clients know how to keep your clients know how to satisfy your clients with your skill that's what really really matter and that's what will keep you at the apex of your um of your career that is beautiful and well said i have no more no more to add i could say you could replay this again so that you can get all the message he has passed across to us see you again next time for episode two thank you very much mr Abraham. Thank you so much,